Hey everybody, final thoughts time for Arborio. Before I get to that, please remember this was a sponsored preview. And with that out of the way, wow. Folks, I'm going to call it right now. Designer Danny Garcia. This is Danny's first published game. And I'm telling you, this is a guy to watch. I think we are seeing the birth of another Dave Turchie. By that, I mean a relatively young up-and-comer who came out of nowhere um, and right out of the gate just started blitzing the industry with really great designs. Because you can go look up Danny. I mean, you can go to Arborea's uh, page on Board Game Beacon. You can look at Designer. Look at I'm looking at it right now. Uh, and he's got this, and he's got four more games that he lists as his upcomings. All of them have won all kinds of awards and stuff like that. I believe this is his going to be his first published game, but he's already got other publishers lined up for the other ones. And if this is anything to go by, this is an incredible debut for a new designer. And it really should come as no surprise because uh, Danny is a former video game artist and designer. And as a former video game designer myself, you know, with over 20 years experience, I, I kind of feel like Danny is a kindred spirit, you know, coming into the board game industry relatively recently, as I understand it, falling so in love. And while I decide, hey, you know what, I'm too old and tired to actually start making board games, but at least I can start talking about about them. That's where this channel came from. Danny is presumably a younger man than me and is ready to put aside those digital toys and start playing with his cardboard and his wooden bits. And I love it. This game is fantastic. I don't mean to bury the lead. Um, and here's the deal. A lot of people there first words are going to be, yeah, but how's it compared to Botoku? What about Botoku? Tell me about Botoku, 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 Botoku. And that's understandable because at first glance, they look very similar. Super bright, lovely, saturated, um, you know, vision of nature and spirits and all that kind of stuff. They feel like they have the same theme, although they are different to be fair. But importantly, gameplay is radically different. And if you want to compare to Arborea to something, you need to compare it to Zulk in the Mayan calendar. Oh yeah, folks, I'm talking about one of the big granddaddies in the industry, one of Jen's and my favorite games of all time. Uh, Zulk of the Mayan Calendar was revolutionary at the time, figuratively and literally, because of the way it actually tracked the passage of time in a worker placement game. That you, um, you know, put the, put your, I think, well, you could put up to three discs on, or, you know, three of your workers on these rotating gears, and every round the gears would move and move and move. And you would have, you would wait until you could recall them from the board and activate them. And the longer you kept them on the gears, the better actions you would get access to. This game takes that idea and just shoots it to the moon, takes it to an 11 because, hey, as you know, it's the same idea. It's nothing as fancy as the gears, granted, but the longer this pilgrimage that this particular pilgrim goes on, you know, and you know, eventually he keeps on pushing. Sooner or later, when they decide to get off, they're not just going to activate one cool thing. They're going to activate a smorgasbord of actions, depending on where they go. Plus, each pilgrimage is literally giving them access to two completely different collections of objectives, or um, of uh, not objectives, um, options you could take. Whether you're going to collect a lot of resources, which. Like I gotta say, probably the most brilliant thing in this game is the way this game handles resources. Because hey, as I generate the trees or the or the mushrooms or the water, or whatever biome stuff I need to uh, you know complete my own um, you know repair my own uh, what do you call them. Uh, ecology cards so that I can swap them in and make my animals happier and all of that. If I generate a bunch of stuff and I don't use it all, then for all the stuff... In most games, hey, use it or lose it, right? And we've seen that so many times. And it's a great design philosophy. I mean, Dominion is based on it. Find a way to use all your coins because you don't get to save. In this game, I love this. Anything you generate that you don't use, instead, you convert your un I mean, you get points for all the stuff you didn't use. And why are you rewarded? for not using stuff because of this very cool little system that requires two tokens to represent a given resource instead of one. Because, hey, if I made one, two, three more flowers, there's six flowers, but I didn't generate any, well, then I will get points, points, points. And I mark that once uh, you put this bottom thing up here, those flowers are not just available to me, they're available to everybody. I get points for putting stuff in the pool that you need to build. This game is so chock-a-block with player-entwined interactions, positive interaction between players because, oh, you know what? I mean, I can see that one is... I mean, you know, I can see you keep moving this one up and you're probably going to get them off there anytime soon. And when you do... 
If he goes south, you're going to generate a lot of kelp. And I can see you don't even need that kelp. So you're probably just going to generate that kelp for the points, right? And then that means I'll finally be able to finish the thing and I don't have to worry about getting on that pilgrimage because I'll use the kelp you made. Sure, you made 11 points out of it. Great for you. But I actually finished the thing that lets get my animals in place. Um, but then you eventually get off and you go north. Because I didn't, I couldn't imagine why you would go and get all those mushrooms. But, you know, I mean, so crap, now I've got to get on there. But, you know, the fact, I mean, you know, that's where it starts. But the fact that multiple people get on the same pilgrimage. And multiple players, or a player can have multiples of their own workers on here. So that the pilgrimage will go faster and faster and faster. So that you can get to those zones that you need and activate those huge paydays that you want. It's really freaking cool. I mean, it is the coolest use of time in a game since Zulkin. And, you know, I've, I've not talked to Danny about this, but I've got to assume he was taking inspiration from Zulkin the Mayan calendar. Uh, you know, but doing something really fresh and new and different. And also something that takes a lot less money to produce, I would assume, quite frankly, which is good in these days where uh, margins on board games is tougher than ever with all the international shipping woes. But anyway, so I mention all this because... Do not assume that, oh, I already have Batoku. I clearly, this is just a Batoku knockoff, right? No, this is a very different game. And in all honesty, for me, this is a Batoku killer. I loved Batoku. I thought it was great. But this game has so much more interesting stuff. And really, at the heart of it, the truly wonderful thing is the inner, um, the synergy uh, the symbiotic relationship that players end up developing, which is so appropriate considering this is a big um, thing about nature blossoming and growing and filling in the cracks. The, play the fact that players are constantly creating opportunities for each other is just the bee's knees. I love everything about this game. Um, granted, I have some prototype issues. Uh, like, uh, you know, they, they, they already know that the uh, animal meeples, which look fantastic, are too big for these spaces. And so they're, they're going to work on that stuff. One thing that is really kind of annoying, hey, it's really easy uh, to tell that the red likes to be on the red stuff, right? But the blue likes to be on the yellow stuff, and the dark blue likes to be on the green stuff. Honestly, I mean, these animals, they're all kind of weird you know, fantasy alien animals that could have been anything. Why couldn't the frog have been pink as a reminder that he likes to go on the pink stuff? And why couldn't the cat have been yellow as a reminder that the cat likes to go on the yellow stuff? And why couldn't the fox be green, etc., etc.? You um, spend a lot of time double, triple, quadruple checking this because they, I mean, there's one. I always know the red slug with antlers likes the red zones. But why? I mean, and purple to pink, that's close. But blue to yellow and, um, well, you know, the tan is interesting because they just want unique spaces. So that one's cool. But orange to purple? I, I would have thought the, the, the purple flower or the purple frog would want to get me, you know. So, easy things to fix. I've often seen weird little things like this. I mean, in fact, actually, to be fair, I had to actually take a pen to my board because uh, this was a little out of date, how much you have to spend for spirit and, and stuff like that. So there's going to be teething issues. That's always the case when I play prototypes, and I'm willing to give it a pass because this game is so fresh um, you know, and gives me feels that I haven't had since the first time I played Zulkin a decade ago. And you know, this Danny guy... Watch out, folks. Uh, if this is the start, I, I can't wait to see where he takes us next. Uh, but Arborea is a fantastic start. And that was the preview, folks. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Have a very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Uh, bye bye